It gives me great pleasure to introduce our speakers today, both Krishmachari and Nuru Karim. I'm going to attempt to describe these polymaths in words. Bosh Krishmachari is an internationally acclaimed artist curator based in Mumbai. He is the founder, director, member, and president of the Kochi Biennale Foundation. Bosh obtained his BFA from the Sajiji School of Arts in Mumbai and his MFA from Goldsmith College, University London. He is a recipient of multiple prestigious awards, including the Kerala Lalit Kala Academy, British Council Travel Award, Made America Art Alliance Award, Charles Wallace India Trust Award, and the Lifetime Fellowship Award, Kerala, uh, Kerala Lalit Academy. Kerala. Prizes of vivid abstract paintings, figurative drawings, sculpture, photography, multimedia installations, and architecture. Our second speaker is Nuru Karim, founder and principal of Nudes. He received his master's in architecture and urbanism from the Architectural Association, AADRL, London, United Kingdom. His undergraduate studies include travel, education in metropolis of Mumbai and Montreal. He has worked for Zahadid Architects in 2005 on a host of institutional projects, both in competition, semantic design, design development stages. Karim has achieved critical recognition both for his built work and, and in competition, in addition to several design awards, including a nomination for the Aga Khan Award for Architecture in 2013. He recently won the World Architecture Community Award Design category. Nuru Karim is also a TEDx speaker 2019, and he presented his work and research on national and international platforms. So glad to have you both here today. So my first question would be to Neuro and Bose, both of you. According to you, which are the best contemporary art galleries, museums, or institutional spaces built in India and abroad? And why are those your favorite? Nuru, you want to start or? No, please, Bose, please start. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, thank you, Foyt, for inviting me to be part of this webinar with the brilliant uh, my friend uh, Nuru Karim and uh, moderator, uh, art collector friend uh, Shalini Pasi. Uh, thank you very much. I really feel that you know there are you know when we think about uh, contemporary gallery spaces, contemporary I would like to say contemporary gallery spaces and museums. It's uh, gallery spaces also there are private and uh, public. You know so it depends on what kind of places have been. So looking at India, I would like to say that in the 80s and 70s, I don't think anything was here. In a way, there were a couple of galleries. In a, I lived in Mumbai in the 80s. Um, I went to Bombay to study art. So I used to see a couple of galleries in Mumbai. Uh, recently, you could see, find, last 15, 20 years, you could find there is a kind of professionalism in designing spaces. You know, what I learned from that space is how not to build a gallery spaces like that, how not to exhibit in such places. Yeah. Um, so that was a kind of great learning from that, you know, because I could be able to see lots of shows there in every seven, seven days. Uh, the policy of the institution is also matter. You know, every seven days you have a new show. How do you put up a, an interesting project in such places? Yeah. I really feel that Kemal Prescott new space is an interesting space. Uh, the language in architecture or interior design, you can say it is fluid architecture. You can always, it's a kind of cliche, this word has been used uh, many times by people. But this fluid spaces, you know, you can really convert that space according to each and every project. In that sense, I think Kemal is an interesting place. Um, interior-wise, uh, a gallery size-wise. Um, and there are there are other gallery spaces as well, you know, like uh, I, in Delhi, um, Photo Inc. got an interesting uh, site. Um, it, it's not really a huge space, but it can be converted into kind of interesting places. Um, it depends on the vision also with the gallery spaces, you can uh, look at the projects. I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, of course, there are many hundreds of uh, interesting museums and gallery institutional spaces, MoMA too, 
dig more into you can go on talking about hundreds of museums but i think in india i am really looking forward to seeing two museums uh, one is one is uh, designed by uh, you know designed by uh, uh, david rj for uh, kiranada museum this is what really i'm looking forward to seeing that uh, museum and the map uh, museum uh, of art and photography in, in bangalore designed by samitra ghosh these two uh, spaces we used to have a you know museum space uh, devi art foundation it was also an interesting place but unfortunately um, you know i i have a problem seeing looking at uh, some of the uh, museums or gallery spaces designed by uh, even in rajasthan this uh, uh, jaipur um, ja you know that museum space i really feel that you know charles courier's design it's as architecture it is it is great but as a gallery space it is um, uh, I'm, i'm sorry to use this word it is a terrible Uh, gallery space um so there are there are hundreds of gallery spaces you know like uh, you can say uh, in a white cube in, in uk they got the two three spaces um, amazing minimalist space when you think about a gallery spaces or exhibition spaces you should think about uh, in a way a minimalist space the art art will make a greater place i feel Uh, and also i i have exhibited in zaha hadid's building in maxi in rome i felt that some of the walls were you know lean uh, i don't know how to exhibit in such place you know if it's the wall is on a slanting wall you can do installation projects but you, you cannot do a straight uh, painting in those kind of places and also the same thing with uh, when we look at the architecture of uh, frank um frank lord right yeah you know that 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 it's almost like a rotten uh, it's kind of you know uh, uh, when we look at the guggenheim museum it's a great place for installation projects and things like that but you know like when we look at a minimalist painting or something like that in a curved wall uh, the same thing about our mumbai's ngm a rotten da building it's also another horrible uh, architecture unfortunately i know it is all done by big names but you know that's the steel railings all these kind of things are when we look at a gallery space a museum space we should think about minimalism in many manner and uh, yeah this i can go on talking about critiquing but i, w- I wish to see a greater greater gallery spaces we have some fantastic uh, private gallery spaces in india right now thank you yeah thank you uh, thank you both for that insight thank you shalini for that wonderful introduction and thank you shraddha and foyt for having us it's indeed a, a pleasure and honor to be sharing space with both and shalini on the foyt flat platform so starting off i think you know the whole point well you know I, you know a big part of my architectural education my art education is actually has uh, has kind of unveiled in gallery spaces um you know so whether it's the guggenheim in in uh, new york or it's the guggenheim in bilbao the museum of modern art in um uh, uh in new york or uh, you know for that matter the british museum the tate modern the goma all of that so i just love spending time in museums and gallery spaces uh and i can spend days and weeks and hours you know uh, i think boss has made a very interesting point uh one point is about the sort of cultural investment you know uh that should be coming into the for the sort of government support in terms of of uh, parcels of land and and perhaps other sort of uh, levies to sort of promote art and cultures so i think uh, a lot of this is now being driven through uh, entrepreneurs uh, he gave the example of kiranadar and we are looking forward to the uh, project which is going to be designed by david ajay uh but i think there's a lot of scope uh we we also know about the uh, maki museum in uh in bihar uh, that was recently done but i think a lo- lo- uh, you know a, a greater sense of investment uh, in the arts and culture in actually triggering off these sort of museum spaces becomes very very critical you know last time i went to uh, guggenheim in bilbao i could actually see three year olds and four year olds 
uh, being led on a school excursion with their teachers and they're seeing Richard Serra and they're seeing uh, Joseph Boys and all of that uh, stuff. Uh, and though we have a few sort of institutions like the CSMVS institution in our own backyard, but I think that sort of exposure at that very early age becomes very, very critical where our education is, is concerned. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, optimism on my front. Uh, there have been precedents in the past, but I think moving forward, I think it will be fantastic just to see the sort of new paradigms of design of museums and gallery spaces uh, that, that could possibly sort of uh, emerge. I would like to, yeah, I would like to, I would like to add, you know, like Nuru designed the gallery in Mumbai. It's uh, it was called a BMB um, in Prescott Road. You know, the Kemal is situated in the same building, uh, which uh, got institutional awards as well. You know, like uh, Nuru, maybe you can, uh, you know, it would be nice, uh, Shalini, also to get to know about that. You know, uh, yeah, your involvement with the, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was saying just to play a devil's advocate, you know, when I do visit the Guggenheim, I feel the part of uh, the reason people actually visiting the space to look at art is because of the architecture. I do understand what you're saying. That's very complicated to hang and it's a nightmare to install works in a curved space. But I think the main draw of Guggenheim is the, is the architecture. I feel, of course, the art is phenomenal. My own home, I have my, the main galleries where I display yeah. art are also curved. And it's absolutely, I can either go for works that are faceted or I can go for installations. And then I have to do the lighting very, very specifically. Bose has visited my home. And uh, you know that, that the main galleries, the main, uh, the two levels of galleries are all curved. And it's an absolute nightmare. But I feel, I think these challenges that architecture brings to us, I think is a lot that we can draw from. That's what I feel. I love challenges, basically. I mean, I won't. I mean, that's just I me. Agree. Uh, you know, like it is, a, it's a temporary, you know, like you are looking at a temporary space. A museum is actually the yeah. structure yeah. is, uh, structure is, of course, you know, it's kind of rotten, uh, circular, all that kind of, you know, but the shows, each and every show is coming to Guggenheim or any places, you know, yours is a private space. You can decide yeah. what you what you, you collect want, yeah. you know, according to that space. But, you know, it's a public, almost like a public, area you are you are installing new project every every other month or you know at different times um of course you know like architecturally you you know it's it's humongous and it is fantastic but you know when it comes to a gallery design uh, that's what i'm i was talking about you know a, a contemporary art gallery design uh, these zahadid's buildings also have this problem you know a bilbao building is amazing when the association with Richard Terra and uh, this architect's relationship is also, I would say, artist relationship, archi artist plus architect, artist relationship is really fantastic. When you look at, uh, you know, uh, architects like um, Frank Gehry's uh, project, you know, uh, he, his architect's artist relationship, you can see it with the uh, Oldenburg's work and Richard Serra's work, almost like, uh, you know, when we look at this architecture, I feel like hundreds of, or, you know, 2025 of Richard Serra's kept uh, kind of uh, buildings, you know, it's a kind of almost like an expressionistic uh, in, in that sense. So anyway, this, uh, there are many museums, you know, like Highline Museum in New York, it's another great museum. Uh, MoMA is a great place, Tate, so many. So we were talking about the museum spaces, gallery spaces, institutional spaces. Uh, thank you. We can thank go you. on talking. Yeah, one, one, one kind of museum I missed out on, and I was actually there before the lockdown in Abu Dhabi, is the Louvre by Jean yeah. Nouvel. And I think it's a fantastic museum. It has a lot of kind of nice sort of plate spaces. It's got a beautiful shell dome on the top, which actually cuts down the solar radiation. So even in summer, it doesn't kind of affect. It's, it has a sort yeah. of straight formations, the way the water actually hits is beautiful. It's got very clean walls for artists to put up their work, installations and, and stuff. So that was that was sort of compelling. And if you actually go across to Paris and you you understand Marquis sort of insertion of the glass pyramid in the Louvre in, in, in Paris, uh, you'll get a sense of how different architects have sort of responded 
uh, to history, to culture, to local climate, to local context. So it's 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 massive, and I think in the future, if India really has to be on the world cultural map, we need to see greater investments on the front. It doesn't matter who's doing it. I'm very happy that David is actually working on that project in Delhi, but we really need that to actually uh, uh, come to the fore in India, across across India, urban, peri-urban India. Thank you so much. Uh, coming to the second question, the relationship between art, architecture, design has become even more symbiotic than ever before. Some would argue that architecture has to have a sculptural presence to be considered relevant in our times. How do you both view this delicate balance between art, artistic and arguably functional aspect of architecture today? Who would like to go first? Um, Maybe Nuru, you can go. Why not? You know, like okay, you can so, give an academic okay. point of view or something like that. Then I will go yeah. as an artist. Uh, well, I'll try. I think Shalini has done some excellent research, and some of the questions are very probing. <laughs> but I'll, I'll attempt. I think what the basic synergies are possible are between art, architecture, and design. But even though we see these as these sort of different disciplines, I think it's important to see this as continuous threads that sort of uh, weave into each other. Um, you know, but I think that sort of uh, technology transfer between these different disciplines becomes interesting. It's also the concepts uh, and ideations that could possibly migrate from one discipline to the other discipline. Inspiration from art, architecture, design become very, very critical. Uh, you know, I often hear about architecture and functional aspects, but I wish architecture could be more fictional what I mean, uh, uh, fictional is not something that's sort of not grounded uh, in reality, but the sense of hyper sort of liberation, you know, hyper sense of democracy. Um, you know, sometimes I feel architecture is still sort of uh, uh, shackled down uh, compared to the arts. So I feel, yes, and of course, there are, it's a very capitally uh, extensive sort of process, architecture, land acquisition, it takes uh, sometimes millions and billions of investment uh, to see a, a decent architectural project uh, getting unveiled. But I wish uh, architecture could be uh, far more fearless. Uh, and for me, art is very fearless. I think that sense of democracy, the, the sense of uh, uh, liberation that you see in the arts is something that architecture could step out and, and therefore it becomes a very interesting conversation as to how architecture and art can actually potentially uh, be the sort of collaborative force moving forward. Yes, yeah, um, I absolutely, absolutely, Nuru. Uh, I totally agree with what you are saying. You know, I would like to take some examples, you know, like when I look at the architecture of Nari Gandhi, he was, he was totally almost like a sculptor. He had the freedom to do what he feel like doing, almost like an artist, you know. So there is a kind of there's uh, there is a kind of dif difficult aspect is that you need to find this, some some clients like that, you know. I think Nari had that kind of great great uh, relationship with uh, his uh, clients, and the same way you can look at there is a kind of collaborative project, or you know, like nowadays you can see uh, since. I've been seeing it with Rajiv Sethi was working with the artists, really, you know, working with Rajiv for this uh, fantastic home designed by, um, you know, uh, uh, Korea in Juhu. It's called Shah House. That's the place I first seen artists working together. You know, it's a kind of assemblage of or uh, amalgamation of different kinds of traditional as well as contemporary practitioners come together and each room is designed by art you know created by artists so there are there are you know like relationship you know like in art project when i look at it in india you know uh, our shantanu parodi young architect you know ex you know worked together with um, sudarshan shetty one of the first shows i remember they collaborated and you know the, it was called falling museum or something like that it's a it was a kind of kinetic piece they created in a small gallery space i think you know uh, our more than tara was put together or something like that or philip's places um 
and there are so many examples like you know you can take emma fusain and the good relationship built with uh, um, you know that in ahmedabad in a gufa created uh, with uh, bb doshi um, so there are so many great examples in india and also when i look at uh, uh, architect like uh, lekabuzia he is is the first person maybe we can say that artist painter sculptor to designer to architecture architect you know these kind of it's almost like a transformation from drawing to sculpting and sculpting to architecture so for me um, an architecture is almost like a large scale sculpture um, it can of course the functionality we can think about it you know when it comes to sculpture uh, sculpture building uh, look at anish kapoor's one of the most talked about a photograph to work in the world in 2011 it says that you know it is the most photographed work in the world it called the beans or the cloud gate in chicago which is which is architecture it, it's not really it is not a functional architecture but in a functional in some ways you know, i can say that the functionality is that there is a kind of uh, you you are part of that kind of sculpture when you when you go to that public participation when you take pictures in front of it or moving around it gives certain kind of pleasure the art can give that kind of pleasure but it it is built almost like a kind of monumental architectural uh, model and there are many other uh, you know architects also in when i look at the wang zhu's project in you know the museum he built in china wang zhu it's almost like an abstract it's uh, abstract artist you know put together bricks the waste and created amazing museum so these are the kind of things you know and and i've been seeing observing whenever i travel other part of the world or you know any places uh, i see what are the kind of materials used by these architects you know like for example in sharja you know i have seen some of the walls are created at the museum some of the museum new museums uh, shake the hood built uh, is with using um, corals you know the, the interesting walls created from the land itself the sand and corals and things like that so it's interesting to see uh, that sculpting of uh, an architect is sculpting or an artist is sculpting you know architecture a functional place you know so there are so many examples uh, nowadays you can see in, in, in india itself there are young people and uh, nuru karim himself he sculpted uh, something fantastic work for tata steel i think it's in the oval maidan in mumbai and other projects as well you know so i think it is important to know the interconnectivity with the creative people whether it is theater makers or theater performers or artists or musicians i think we should all come together to make any kind of play it would be great to have that kind of relationship so i think i think i think a great sculpture according to me thank you great thank you thank you both these fields often intermingle in their inspiration and in their process for example certain installation of site specific works can be often conceived from architectural principles would you like to elaborate on this relationship is this a product of more contemporary work where previous established boundaries between art and architecture have been broken down or it has always existed in some sense boss you want to go no no please <laughs> Is is can you just give me a sorry I lost a bit of audio there Shalini can yeah, you give me a yeah yeah I'll repeat that these fields often intermingle in their inspiration and in their process for example certain installation or site specific work can often be conceived from architectural principles would you like okay. to elaborate on this relationship okay I got it on the screen now yeah, yeah. so I think you know uh, coming back to picking some of the threads from Bose's uh, yeah. absolutely uh, from the earlier response i absolutely yeah. love when art swallows architecture you know absolutely love that one of the greatest examples is uh, christo and uh, jean claude's uh, you know wrapped right stag uh, you know the big sort of uh, structure that was wrapped in about 100000 uh, square meters of fabric 
uh, tied with blue rope. Uh, and it was actually rejected several times before it actually got that sort of approval in the 1990s. But it was this amazing sort of uh, take and a lot of critics actually felt this was a nice way to actually uh, run through a narrative on unified Germany and uh, set up Berlin as, uh, you know, a global world city uh, post the sort of wall episode. Uh, the other great example, as mentioned, was Anisha's Marcias, you know, which actually swallowed the turbine hall at the Tate Modern. And the turbine hall is a great example of the of an adaptive reuse structure. So it doesn't really mean that when we talk about galleries or investing in galleries or art galleries or museums, we got to build everything from scratch. We can actually look at existing sort of assets and see. Uh, if there is potential to take some of these assets and uh, through the lens of adaptive reuse, uh, uh, increase the lifespan. I think that becomes a far more sustainable approach. Where you do not have these assets, yes, you can think about building ground up. But where you have assets, you can actually look at that. And that makes it a very sort of interesting uh, conversation between uh, the space, you know, the production of space that very often, often architects and artists actually absolutely occupied with the whole production and idea of you know, space. But I love, absolutely love it when art is large, it's massive, you know, you're looking at, it's literally swallowing architecture. For me, art is not something that's that, that's on a wall. I, I still adore the Mona Lisa. Uh, and I have Bose's painting right up here on my wall and I, I kind of see it and I love it and I enjoy it every day. Uh, but for me, when I see these massive installations that are very immersive, experiential, of course, you cannot put this in your house, right? You cannot put a, a smaller model of that in your house. You've got to go out and uh, immerse yourself in this sort of public art experience. So I love that when it just, when I, it's, it's like deep sea diving. It's very immersive. Yeah. It wraps you completely. Yeah, it encompasses you, basically. Yeah, that's good. I think, I think, you know, like, I, I would like to see that the whole universe as a kind of uh, as as a kind of architecture, you know, like uh, the nature itself is uh, one of the finest examples of its own. You know, you take a plant or a tree, it has its own structure, amazing structure. And the human body itself is amazing structure. I think we are all part of that architecture itself. I think the universe itself. Um, but you know, when I look at uh, when I look at architecture projects. I think, you know, like uh, Nuru mentioned, the Turban Hall is a, a great example for how you can, the temporal projects, you know, temporality of uh, that kind of spaces, you know, like every time you can have an amazing, you know, Olaf or Elias and onwards and Anish Kapoor onwards, all these people are working with the architects and scientists. I think these relationships are also, you could see it in contemporary architecture and art building. Um, I, I think it's that the temporal project of uh, Serpentine is an interesting Serpentine gallery. Summer pavilions are an great examples of sculptures uh, mm -hmm. or temporal sculptures or temporal architecture. Um, the 2000 onwards, they have been doing it. This year, they could not do it because of the pandemic. But but they're, they're also working with the, a certain kind of augmented reality. Um, so that's these serpentine pavilions always is a kind of great example of cultures functional functionality within itself you know some of the sculptures are not really uh, or installations are or architecture is not at all functional so you know i i remember japanese architect i've forgotten his name but you know visually it was stunning and minimal and things like that it's a kind of installations of many many uh, aspects within uh, yeah that's it thank you Thank you. So, Bose and Kareem, what are some of the works that you have interacted with in the field of art and architecture that you both found very striking, perhaps that made an impact on your respective practices? Is there like a specific work or a, you know, that inspired you to do something? As I mentioned earlier, you know, I, I inspire from the nature itself. Uh, that's uh, that's just my university. That is my uh, that is my ground. You know, I pluck it from there. I pluck ideas from there. I pluck ideas from this nature itself. Of course, I I in, you know what is beautiful about uh, an artist's life, and or uh, you know, I believe that uh, my conversations with uh, um, all kinds of 
uh, people who really believes in um, you know uh, contemporary art making or architecture building or music or things like that. I I like to give an example of uh, a fantastic example is the Ketsa Forum. You know, it is kind of it is designed by uh, Herzog and Demeron with uh, this um, a biologist. You know, one of the finest example of vertical uh, you know inventions in the world called Vertical Garden in 2009. Uh, in Time Magazine mentioned it's one of the one of the best inventions. That vertical garden itself, it's a kind of life itself, almost like a 200 different kind of species kept it on that wall. So the juxtaposition of the heritage and the contemporary plus this this green landscape, a vertical landscape, uh, it's a kind of amazing, amazing um, realization. So the architects is, I think, you know, architects, most of the architects are working like an artist or an artist think like uh, an architect I and mean, these are the kind of things i see it uh, in uh, present time so it's all connected our uh, our you know the first questions to the second to the third i believe that um, i can you know i i think that's that's what i want to say the universe itself is uh, it's a kind of great example of architecture yeah great thank you so much both uh neural to has, has something inspired you to something from art? Uh, yeah, I think tons of it, you know, just there's so much, so much data out there. But I think this, this conversation is. Screen is gone off. Yeah, okay, perfect. It's... Uh, Neuro's connection is gone, I think, yeah. Sorry. Hello. Hello. Yes. Can you yeah. hear you now? Perfect. Yeah. Sorry, we lost contact. Okay. So I think there are tons of examples that I've already sort of mentioned, but I think this conversation is particularly inspiring. Uh, if you've noticed that. Um, Bose has this amazing sort of fascination for architecture uh, as much as I have for the arts. And you can see his passion for architecture, you know, my passion for, for the arts. And I think that's what you need. You need a lot of conversations. You need a lot of these sort of collaborations across these different sectors uh, to push these sort of boundaries ahead. And I think it's just a question of time. You look at Gary's and Clay Soldenberg's collaboration over a period of time, Gary and Richard Serra, uh, I think uh, Anish and Patrick uh, from Zaha's office also actually collaborated on a project. There are a whole bunch of these very exciting sort of possibilities. Um, and I think it's, if you see, it's the world of, you know, design in a way, so to speak, art and, and architecture. So I think there's, there's tremendous potential for, for stretching these boundaries uh, forward and, and testing these collaborations uh, in a bunch of different mediums, in a bunch of different mediums, it's possible. Perfect. Thank you. So a question for both. What, in your opinion, are some aspects that an artist can learn or invite from the field of architecture? What are some principles or ways of looking at matter, material, space that can be understood through architecture? I think quite a lot. I can. I think, you know, we, we all should work together. You know, like the materiality, when we talk about materiality or nature, there are hundreds of things we can think about you know there are there are material museums as well you know like uh, an architect needs to know what are the kind of materials using and which location what's the climate so artists also needs to know what's the climate we are living in and we are also responsible for you know art making in contemporary time there are politics as well as you know uh, there are many issues need to be interacted you know so artists are not really separated from I believe that you know. So I learned from architects some of the the projects. I think you know architects also make it politically uh, important. So then these are these are the subjects I think you know we need to have a little bit more studies on. But I think you know our culture you know culture itself can be uh, politically and architecturally looked at it 
Um, so definitely I learned quite a lot from these conversations with all my architects friends. Uh, you know, whenever I uh, get a chance, I, I would like to listen to them. I would like to hear them. I would like to see. So I, there is a, there is, of course, there is a difference in between art making and uh, uh, architecture. But, you know, uh, that art, that architecture can be, you know, uh, a greater, uh, greater artwork as well. Um, so I learned quite a lot from my architecture friends, collectors like you also. I, I visited your place looking at art. It's not just looking at art. And I was also having conversations with other great minds visiting your place or, you know, having. So these things are important, I think, you know, I take it from. Um, but I, I, I never um, follow any architect I do or I never wanted to follow any kind of master. I would like to imbibe things, uh, not, you know, you can say uh, it's nothing can influence uh, if you create something new. Um, I would like to give some kind of surprises when I do something new a later period of time. You know, so for today, I would say that, you know, I would like to hear, I would like to learn from Nuru and, you know, Shalini or these conversations, you know. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Perfect. Similarly, a question for Nuru. What are some of the aspects that architects and designers can learn or imbibe from art? Since both the fields of art and architecture have existed for decades alongside each other, is there a perspective that art can lend to to create innovative design? It's, it's a very interesting question, Shalini. I think, you know, uh, you know, every time I'm actually working on a public art project or like a show, uh, you know, my whole studio uh, feels that sense of positive vibe, you know. Uh, I could be, I can be a little grumpy in my studio. But, you know, the moment they know I'm actually working on, on, on some of these art forms, uh, there is this a tremendous sense of libera liberation that I actually experience. It's so much fun, so much enjoyable. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the greatest things I've learned from art, which I've spoken earlier, is a sense of fearlessness, you know, not holding yourself back. In a way, you are the artist, you are the designer, you are the client, you're the fabricator. And I think the entire pipeline, you know, from design and ideation to concept to development to realization is kind of shrunk uh, to create a far more fabulous sort of uh, experience. Uh, what I learned from architecture, on the other hand, is the way you actually start connecting people and places together. And therefore, we position our work in the domain of public art, which I find as this very democratic sense of uh, realization of an art form. Uh, you know, uh, it's also democratic because it's then the open forum and you can go and see it. It's not in one of these museums that you need to make a tr uh, trip to, or neither is it a sort of a private collection. Uh, but it is this sort of democratic sort of art form. Uh, and uh, the other aspect that I then get from architecture and imbibe it back into art is this ability of architecture and art to create social impact. So when we did the Bookworm Pavilion, we actually started working on education as empowerment as a theme. We're working on other art projects. We're looking at pollution. We're looking at other art forms that are actually looking at uh, these sort of edible pavilions that are uh, commentating on, on food growth and uh, uh, access to food equity uh, and access to uh, food security. Uh, water becomes a very important aspect of our work, water conservation, all of that. So I think, uh, you know, that's where we then start working within the domain of, of art and architecture. So for us, it's a very sort of uh, cross-learning across both these uh, sort of domains. Excellent. Oh, incredible. So um, I also want us to consider the role of the viewer interacting with either a work of art or on an architectural space. How do you uh, define the experiential effect of both art and architecture? Is it different the way architecture would affect somebody and an art would have a different impact? Uh, or yeah go ahead please go ahead boss ah uh, it's an interesting question uh i think life itself is you know like life itself could be 
seen it as a kind of uh, I don't separate myself, you know, where where I wherever I am present, you know, like wherever I am living. That space is an important. Um, uh, that the life itself, that architecture, the participations with that uh, uh, the location is always important. That the, where 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 you set it up your uh, home, uh, the home become. Um, you know, art spaces or living spaces. We call it living spaces. I think that is that's an important aspect. I don't, you know, like uh, I, you don't need to really look far and uh, look at a larger, larger architecture. You can be part of the architecture itself and then then think about, you know, a surrounding. The same way you can look from outside as well. You know, the perspective would be very different. So uh, when uh, when you you decide that you are an artist then look at an architecture it's different when you are an architect looking at architecture is uh, going to be the perspective would be very different so i think in where you're looking at from are you having a bird view are you going to have a, a frog view or something like that i think where you the location of looking at things are important um, uh, whether it is architecture or or art Yeah, for thank me, I think. Yeah. Sorry, Charlotte. I was saying. No, I think thank you both. So for me, uh, for me, I think you know where these two worlds completely collapse, uh, you know, or become one, is uh, apparent in certain sort of typologies, right? Architectural typologies. Point in case being a museum, gallery, so on and so forth. Uh, where neither is the architecture trying to shout out too loud or neither is the art form actually trying to shout, shout out too loud. And I think some of the greatest works of art are very true and honest to themselves and so are some of the greatest works of architecture where, which are very true and honest to themselves. And I think uh, this sort of typology is something where you actually see the collapse of both these domains. As a viewer personally, when I actually enter a museum or a gallery space, I really am not conscious that, oh, this is architecture. I'm suddenly looking at a wall on a, a painting on a wall. I'm working on a site, looking at a site specific installation uh, uh, or, a, or a sculpture within a gallery space. Um, uh, you know, I just feel it's it's a little uh, uh, back to urban design and uh, art. But I think one of the other sort of uh, typologies is, is infrastructure. Uh, and I remember actually visiting this very interesting sort of uh, bridge museum, uh, which is a pedestrian bridge that moves from point A to point B. Uh, and it's not only a bridge, but it actually becomes a sort of a museum for like a pedestrian access. So I think there is this possibility of even infrastructure coming in. And I think, you know, with this sort of uh, uh, a lot of uh, you know, airports, uh, healthcare facilities, hospitals that actually start looking at elements such as art is healing, uh, railway stations, railway terminuses. I think India is now at that position where you will see a lot of infrastructure coming in into these domains, a lot of investment coming into infrastructure as well. Um, uh, so I think, you know, these these are the larger sort of public domains, uh, spaces, which have a lot of potential besides the traditional museum, gallery, uh, so on and so forth. In addition, there have been a lot of attempts made by a lot of galleries across the world, including Guggenheim, to decentralize the traditional Guggenheim Museum, right? So Guggenheim then had a collaboration with BMW, and they created these sort of decentralized uh, uh, BMW, Guggenheim sort of galleries that move across floating museums, you know, Guggenheim Museum floating on water. So it, it, I mean, the whole point is about innovation and how do we actually start looking at this typology uh, uh, and, and, and test it uh, across, you know, architecture, urban design, and infrastructure design. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. Lastly, uh, what advice would you like to give to young artists, architects, and practitioners who are exploring developing their practice? What can they learn from these respective fields and their in interaction? So, Bose, any advice for upcoming... <laughs> I think you know, like these webinars are all important. You know, like I, I that enthusiasm to know about things needs to be there. You know, when you want to be a, a great, uh, an you know, important artist or an architect, you need to go out and watch. You need to 
uh, go out, out and experience the theater spaces, music spaces. I would say that, you know, keep on doing the daily practices of sketching, daily practices of reading, daily practices of conversations. You know, I think it is very important. These conversations will definitely will take them. Uh, it's a kind of, it is the first step. Your, uh, as architecture students, it is one of the most important things is that your ability to communicate uh, to your client. I think it is important that, you know, what you are talking about, what, what are the kind of philosophy you developed through your materials using for architecture or the site you're using for architecture. I think all these conversations with all kinds of fields to be accepted and, you know, um, browse through libraries. You know, nowadays you, you have this, I mean, all the information, I, I give talks to all these uh, young architecture colleges and things like the architects. I tell them that, you know, it is important to have, you know, you have lots of information. What is important is that, you know, you transform that, those informations into um, more and more valuable thing. I was lucky to meet with uh, many great architects and artists like, you know, uh, San Capadia onwards, you know, like uh, I used to go to architecture colleges, you know, the, my cafeteria was, you know, in JG School of Arts was, you know, it was, that location was interesting because one side there was architecture, the other side was commercial art and, uh, you know, fine arts colleges situated in one location. So the cafeteria was an interesting place for conversation. I would like to say these words again, this act of drinking beer with the friends is the highest form of art. Uh, this Tom Marioni, this conceptual artist said, I believe that, you know, you can have conversations over a coffee. I think it is important these webinars are all playing an important role. I don't know how many people are attending, but it is important to know there are some kind of gist, some kind of splash you get it on each and every conversation. Thank you so much for Floyd and, you know, organizing this. Uh, thank you. And um, best wishes for the younger generation of practitioners.